Hi everyone, um, it's been a long while since I've done a video, I've been really busy, um, so I thought what I'd do is I'd just do a video while I'm going somewhere, um, I've got a few minutes so I thought I'd, I'd do a video, and what I want to really focus on in this video is actually for people who are just graduating how to land their first sort of data analyst role, because I know how difficult it can be when you've just graduated, it's a very competitive um, marketplace out there. But that's not to say that people aren't looking, people are hiring, for example, you know, uh, I'm also hiring for junior analysts um, and I've seen a lot of other sort of adver adverts going out for junior analysts or I know of uh, people hiring for junior analysts. So what I wanted to do was give uh, people who are, uh, you know, just graduated um, and want to become a data analyst sort of tips on uh, what you should do. So my three key things that I think you should do um, if you want to become a data analyst. Okay, so the first thing I would suggest is that you get your CV in order. Now, a lot of the time with graduates, when I see their CVs, it, you know, it's quite generic. It's quite, um, you know, it could apply to any role. So what happens is that generally graduates sort of say, oh, here's my sort of generic skills that I've learned in my degree, or if, if you've had uh, work experience, this is what I've done uh, for a work experience but that it's not specific to uh, a data analyst. So what I would suggest is that you look at your skills that you've done during your degree and decide how it's relevant for being a data analyst. An easy example is that if you use Excel, right? So if you've used Excel in your degree or use it even in your personal life or in other jobs that you may have done, part-time jobs, highlight that you have experience of Excel, how many use, years that you've used it. Um, so that really shows me as an employer that you already have sort of that um, ability to use a tool that are used by a lot of analysts. So the other things that you could list are, for example, if you know any programming language. So if you know even things like HTML, or if you know some SQL, or a bit of JavaScript. I mean, I know that if you have a numerate, deg uh, numerate degree, they, they do teach you things like R or Python. So if you have that kind of programming skills and experience, then list it down. And, and don't overdo it. Don't say, you know, you're, you're an expert at it. Just say, look, you used it in your degree, potentially to do an assignment, um, and leave it at that, okay? So then, then the next thing you want to put in your CV is your degree. So if you've got a numerate degree you know it goes really above your summaries or your skills so I know that, that you've got that background I'm not really going to be looking for work experience because I know that a lot of graduates won't have work experience but if you do have really relevant really relevant work experience then yes do put them um, up on the CV but you know if you don't then get your degree up there now if you like I said if you have a numerate degree whether it's maths or physics or um, you know economics or something then that's great you know I, I know that, that you would have covered um, or, or you're very familiar with numbers and numbers are part of what you studied but sometimes you know people who study let's say history or English want to become a data analyst now when I look at that I'll be wondering to myself well why is that person wanting to become a data analyst so what you've got to do is highlight why you want to become a data analyst whether it's something in your degree that made you want to become a data analyst um, or whether it's something else something you know you your friends or family or someone else who uh, has interested you in this area so for example I've actually got a psychology background um, and the reason it's relevant to analytics is because psychology has a lot of statistics uh, and research methodology so I sort of emphasize that and say that's why I got into data analytics because of my uh, because the psychology degree had a lot of uh, you know statistics and uh, dead, um, research methodology um, so that's the first thing so get your CV in order make sure you, you know you highlight skills that are relevant to a data analyst don't just keep it generic um, obviously talk about things like you know you've worked in teams so if you've done project work in team it's great to emphasize that say I've worked in teams you know I've, I've done project work in teams if you you know how you work individually you know it's worth emphasizing that but mainly what I'm looking for is do you have some some relevant skills that will uh, put you above other people so for example a tool like Excel any programming language your degree again if your degree is not relevant or not directly uh, related to a numerate degree then you know emphasize why you what you want to become an analyst and then obviously if you have any work experience that's great put it in you will always have an advantage if you've got some work experience because as an employer I, I always find it easier to hire someone who's got relevant work experience um, because I know that they know what to expect but that's not always the case sometimes if you've got a great educational background then then you, you will have a really good chance okay so that's the first thing the second thing in terms of applying for graduate jobs is um, how do you look for those jobs? Okay, so a lot of you will be probably going to like LinkedIn or you will be going to uh, job sites like Indeed and Munster um, and they're great and you'll find roles in there. Now, if you apply directly to the company, a lot of the time what happens is that a lot of people apply. You know, I know in companies where there's up to like 60 to 100 people applying uh, per role so you know your CV could get drowned out it could get filtered out by uh, the technologies that look at keywords or it could be that you know there's someone more more experienced or more relevant who gets the job so what I would do is look at those jobs that are being advertised okay and have a look 
at recruiters, right? So if recruiters are also um, advertising that role, that means they've been engaged by the company to also fill that role, okay? Now, the reason I, I recommend recruiters, especially in the data analyst space, is that they usually have a good close working relationship with the hiring manager, so they know what the hiring manager wants. It's something that you won't know, so when you do your CV, you're not really sure how to position your CV because you don't know what the hiring manager wants. So going through a recruiter who's already had a, a discussion or a relationship with the hiring manager, they can advise you on how to frame your CV, how what to put in it so that it gets through um, that initial screening, okay? And also what happens is that they will do some screening themselves. Well, obviously, as an employer, uh, I use a recruiter uh, because I want them to do some of the work, screen out people who are totally irrelevant. So if you do use a recruiter, they'll be able to tell you, look, this role's not relevant or not suitable for you or you won't get past the screening phase. So at least you're not wasting your time waiting for a response after submitting your CV. You can move on and look at other, um, you know, uh, other jobs and stuff. So um, like I said, so I would, if you can, and if the job is advertised um, by a recruiter, then go through the recruiter. I've I found, especially in the, in, the, in the data analytics space, recruiters are really helpful um, and really useful to getting a role. Now, obviously, that you know, not all of them are the same. Some are good, some are bad, like like every industry. Um, so you've just got to make sure you find a good recruiter. And to be honest, you know, and apart from sort of personal uh, recommendations and references for recruiters, you know, you just have to work with them and find out how good they are. Um, and, and go on that basis. So that's number two, you know, if you can, if you see the job being advertised as a recruiter, and uh, um, then rather than go direct, I'd go for the recruiter only because, like I said, they, they can tell you what the uh, client is looking for, or what the employer is looking for. They can sort of pre-screen you so that, you, you know, you're not wasting your time submitting your CV to places that aren't going to consider you and also help you with uh, framing your CV and also what to say in the interview so that you have a better chance. So the final thing that I would recommend is to leverage your informal network. Now, a, a lot of you who are graduate potentially won't have a large professional network Now, some of you might have a professional network if you've done internships or you've got some work experience but most of you won't have like a large professional network so you should leverage leverage your informal network and what I mean here is people that your sort of uh, parents know people that your neighbors know people people who within your sort of relationship network know other people and typically they will know people who are looking for data analysts either in their own company, the company that they work in, um, you know, it'd be brilliant if they actually worked in an analytics space. Um, but if they don't, they potentially work in a company that needs analysts, um, or they, they know someone who's in their professional network who's looking. So, for example, whenever I'm recruiting for a role, I'll typically put it on a WhatsApp group where I've got friends and family, um, and say to them, "Look, I'm looking for someone like this," um, and those people will then forward it on to um, people that they may know. Now, one of the good things that I found is that when people recommend someone through their informal network, they they do so when they're very confident that this person you know, is, is good enough for the role. And the reason for that is obviously sometimes they're referring people from their uh, personal life or personal network to their professional network and so they want to make sure that their reputation is also protected. They're not just recommending anyone. Um, and also I think when you do recommend someone through an informal network there isn't that much scrutiny in terms of oh they, they've given me a really bad candidate you know people are just putting people forward hoping that you know we can help each other out now that for me as an employer is it's a really good method to get candidates that I may never have had vis visibility on because um, you know they, they, they may not you know look for jobs in websites that I post them on or they may not um, you know know recruiters that um, you know, that, that I engage with. So by giving it to this, I, I sort of open up my network uh, and my pool of candidates, which is really good. So what I would suggest is that, you know, you, you leverage this informal network, speak to your parents, speak to neighbors, speak to relations, ask them that, you know, you're, you're interested in data analysts. If you know anyone who's um, recruiting, then to put your name forward, you know. Um, sometimes it may be the case that they, they, they might just do an introduction and say, look, I've got, you know, someone uh, who, who want, who's interested in being a data scientist or data, sorry, data analyst, um, and, and you are looking for someone, you know, would you, would you mind just talking to them? Um, you know, and you know, so, you know, the worst that can happen is they say no, but you know, the, the, you know, they, they might take take that offer and say, yeah, sure, I'll have a discussion, and they can give you probably useful feedback if you find that you know your, your CV is not um, relevant or spot on for a, a data analyst job, or if, if they find that you know you, you should re-emphasize certain skill sets to have a better chance. So yeah, so yeah, so that's basically the, the final thing that I'd recommend: Le leverage your informal network. Um, you know, you will be surprised uh, who knows who, um, and you might find that you can land your first role as a data analyst. Well, that's it. 
Thank you for listening to the video. Um, I hope you found it useful. Please do subscribe. Um, and also, if you can, please do share the video. Uh, the more people, hopefully, I can help lots of people by making this content. Um, yeah, and hopefully, I won't be too long before I make an, another one. I've just been busy. Um, but it, obviously, if you guys subscribe and like the video and share the video, then it will motivate me and I'll think to myself, oh, God, this is really useful for people. So uh, I'll sort of push myself to make more videos. And if there's anything else you want me to specifically talk about, please do put it down in the comment section below. And I'll, um, yeah, I'll try and make a video around that. Thank you very much and um, yeah, please do subscribe and share the video.